What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Apartment Shenanigans. I'm Avery. I'm Ben. And today we're going to be staying on the topic of gaming mainly, just different gaming news, memories of gaming, how we got into it, first consoles and whatnot. Hope you guys enjoy. Not talking about E3, talking about just games in general. What, is, mm-hmm. what was the first game you played? Um probably something on the SNES or the NES so maybe um, Super Mario Brothers really far back but like I didn't really know what I was doing or that I was playing a game or anything so like the OG Super Mario Bros yeah see I played the Super Mario Bros but like honestly I don't know which Mario game was like my first one it honestly may have been Mario 64 and that oh god I'm trying to remember because like my first game ever was definitely something really simple probably the first one to memory it was either Paperboy or Sonic the Hedgehog I do not remember Paperboy at all really I think yeah. I, I think we may have talked about it briefly before but it was either on what the the S N E S or N E S? I don't remember. You you don't know at all. For what? Paperboy? Yeah. Oh, I have no idea. Yeah. Do you know well, what what the concept was at all? You were like, didn't you ride a bicycle and you delivered papers and you had to like throw them into the what you call it? <laughs> when you say the concept of like old games, that you just realize how boring they were. But yeah, that was like the whole game. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought, right? Like you, so it was it was um, top down, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was like top down, and you could throw it into the mailbox, this porch stoop thing, or like into a window. I I think because I think you're aiming for the mailboxes, and if you fuck right. up, you would either like hit it on the front porch, which is like I think maybe like the second best points you could get. Then yeah. you could really mess up and hit the window, like. Uh, hit it into the house yeah and, definitely yeah that's like the what i remember of it the most and that's that's really about it i remember we always went to my grandma's house every summer and i played that and that alone and my brother and i just loved it yeah i never played that but yeah that was really about it and then um i remember we went to my cousin's house and we they had um the dreamcast so we played sonic the hedgehog and like mm-hmm. just hearing like the first like Sega chime when you like boot it up, like I specifically remember that and having a mm-hmm. a Woody doll, and I remember playing it and <laughs> my Woody doll got lost, and I remember my mom told me like the dog ate it or something. That's terrifying as a child. But I always remember that trip mainly for playing Sonic the first time. And why is that associated with that memory? I I don't know. Like I guess Sonic was just so much fun, and then that was just losing Woody and like having Woody there at my cousin's was just like another added thing. Okay, it's weird how the human brain like remembers things, right? Like why we associate certain things. Well, I mean, the way my brain works, I feel like it's a little different too. Chris always made fun of me for that. One story Chris always likes to, um, he always likes to bring up was uh, when we were at Safeway one day and we were talking about something and just something really random. He said like a word that started with a C and in my head I was like C, cash. Cash starts with C. Oh um, yeah, the word association thing, yeah. So I like ran back to Safeway and got my change out of the register. And... You do do that, yeah, because that's even happened. Since I've known you. Yeah, I definitely haven't um, had anybody that did something quite like that, or like when you're packing for your trip and you're putting on, like you pretend to put on your, like the clothes that you're going to wear. So you're like, if you're taking three shirts, you like put on three shirts and then you like put on three pairs of underwear. Like imagine, imagine getting dressed for every day so to make sure instead of just like counting, like, Oh, I'm going for a three-day trip. I'll I'll get one, two, three shirts. Okay, three pairs of underwear, or whatever. 
wear or whatever. You just like put them on, which is super strange. That was I mean, probably yeah, weird. It makes sense for me. So pertain because I always forget something whenever I go somewhere. Like going to school. Oh yeah, so do I. One of the first years, I think I forgot all of my summer shorts, every single one. As opposed to your winter shorts. <laughs> well, I got I brought like pants and like everything else, but I forgot all my shorts. So I had to get a friend to bring that down. Then one time I had to, not had to, but I was packing. And then when I got to where I needed to go, I realized I forgot all of my underwear. And I've never forgotten everything. I usually end up like one day of clothes short or something. Because like in my head, I always just think, oh, Mm -hmm. I'll wear clean clothes there. And then those will be the same clothes I wear home. Generally, it's like travel day. It's like... I don't know. You not. You generally don't really get dirty or anything, especially if you're going like for a couple hour drive to get to like the beach or wherever you're going. So it's like, yeah, I, I might have worn them for like four or five hours, but I was just sitting in the car, and nothing really happened. Right. So um, I home. do that, but like I don't know, just pretend to put the clothes on. That's just what I've done, probably like the past like five to seven years that helped me remember what I need to do. To, I don't know. Yeah, it's just. I don't, it, I imagine like a little kid like that wants to get like pack his own clothes because he's a big boy now or whatever and like you know he's three or four or something and that's what he does to like remember like you know and like if you're a parent or something and you like you walk in and like little Johnny's like getting his clothes out and you just see him with like four shirts on <laughs> well, like what are you doing anyway yeah that's what I do and my brain's weird I have weird little quirks like that But going back to gaming a little bit, um, like first game, you said you're not exactly sure. Uh, first gaming system you had? Uh, the first one we ha- that we like actually owned was uh, the Sega Dreamcast. Like, did you just have Sonic for that or uh, Sonic Adventure? Anything specific you remember? Um, I had Sonic like. It's kind of like Mario Party, but it was Sonic. It was like a board game type Sonic game? Yeah. And you like, it was literally Mario Party, but with Sonic characters and everything. Like, I know there was like Sonic R Racing and Sonic like 3D mm-hmm. World or something. Like, ah, oh God, uh, let me, I need to figure this out now. <laughs> so I had that and I had like Tony Hawk. Pro Skater 2, I think is the one that I had. I didn't have the first one. And then... Was it Sonic Shuffle? I don't know. Is that the one that looks like Mario Party? That definitely could be it. Um, and then we had, like, the Sonic game where, like, the Sexy Rouge character came out. I think that was Sonic Adventure, um, the first one. Because... That- I'm pretty sure Sonic Adventure came out on Dreamcast and then got re-released for other consoles later on, or like ported. Mm-hmm. Like my biggest Sonic game gotcha. that other than like Sonic One, but my brother and I used to play Sonic CD, and we would play on. He would play as Sonic, I'd play as Tails, and sometimes Flip Flop. But since he was the older brother, he would be Sonic most of the time. And I remember just the uh, the opening theme song to that game was Sonic Boom. And it was just a really cool, like, 2D little action thing to Sonic like, running around, like, a desert land. And we played that nonstop. And then they had, like, a mm-hmm. like a racing game, a racing mode, where you could just do, like, um, a circuit in, in the level. But, yeah, we just played on the same keyboard. He probably had, like, the arrow keys. And I probably had, like, I think it was actually um, Z, S, and X, maybe. I don't know. But I remember we always played that a ton. And then we ended up getting... Yeah, that that's why it was PC? called Sonic CD, actually. It was the third Sonic game, but it was um just a PC port. And the only I you said, like, the keyboard, and but, like, the Dreamcast did have a oh, keyboard did, accessory yeah. for it. So I was like, uh, yeah. Dude, the second Dreamcast was literally, like, the original Xbox, mm-hmm. but, like years early because it had um like a dsl modem in it and you could play games online with other people and stuff so 
it was way ahead of its time. Plus, it used CDs and World of uh, that generation was all cartridge based and everything. That's kind of what led it led to its demise. Which fun fact uh, about cartridges and CDs? The Nintendo and Sony were partnered together to make a console together, and Sony wanted to go uh, make UCDs for the game. And Nintendo said that was a stupid idea because cartridges is like the best, better alternative. So they end up, um, Nintendo would behind Sony's back Mm -hmm. and ended up making their system and doing other things. So then Sony uh, ended the partnership, made the PlayStation, and then Nintendo ended up making the Nintendo 64. And yeah, that's how the the companies kind of split and to do their own thing, kind of started their own console wars with with those two consoles. And then even now today. Gotcha. Yeah, I think I heard something about that before, but I didn't know what the console they were supposed to make together was or anything. Um, maybe yeah. it was the PS1, yeah. maybe? At that point? Yeah, because Sony's first console is the PlayStation 1. Yeah, but I didn't know if it was like they scrapped whatever they were, the whole concept of what they were going to do with Nintendo and then made their own sort of one-off thing, or if they stole like that whole they just you know, rebrand that, it. I'm not too sure. No, I just know on. about their partnership and then eventually parting. And, and like even um, in the early 90s when the systems came out, uh, and Crash Bandicoot was like the flagship uh, mascot for PlayStation, and then Mario was for Nintendo. Um, <laughs> they had those commercials mm-hmm. with like a guy in a Crash Bandicoot costume um, talking to Nintendo, like the Nintendo headquarters. So, like, oh, come on, plumber boy, what, what are you doing? Come outside and fight me. And like, that was like a huge thing that Nintendo did. Like, I think Sony's slogan was Sony does what Nintendo don't. So, um, that's really yeah, funny. Just they, they had their rivalry and then Xbox ended up coming into the scene when they were doing stuff with, I mean, I don't know the whole process, but I know like the original Xbox was actually supposed to be some kind of computer something. And then end up wanting to play games on it, and then it kind of led to what it is, at least for the the OG Xbox and like the giant controller, the Duke that they have. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's a lot more information than I had, or was you know, and <laughs> I, I would have known anyway. Stuff I found out slowly throughout the years of YouTube, whatnot. But, yeah, favorite game then, like, of all time. Like, I know you play... All time? I know you play, like, Doom. You like that a lot, and... I don't even know what other games um, you like. Favorite overall of everything? I would probably say Half-Life 2. Mm-hmm. And then probably the Gears series. Or probably the top two slots, at least what I traditionally tell people my my favorites are. But like I don't do favorites <clears throat> a whole lot. But I remember really liking Half Life Two a ton, apart as the whole like orange box um, segment. So like Half Life Two, and then the two like sort of expansions that they had with it. Right. Yeah, I haven't like. I mean, you got me the the orange box on Steam, and I set, need to get into that. But really need to play Half Life Two, which you should just play Half Life, and then play Half Life Two and the expansions. So I definitely do need to play like the first Half Life, though. Um, not to understand it, I played Half Life Two before I played the original Half Life, um, and liked it perfectly fine. I don't know. I actually don't know if the stories intertwine very much, if at all, honestly. Because just thinking about it, it seems like Half Life kind of was maybe a few years after, many years after the first one. So it's kind of like separate, but it uses some of the same like NPC characters, like the little head crab things and stuff like that. Because the first one is like they're mining for something and they like crack the planet's core and like aliens come out or something. And then the second one is like sort of post-apocalyptic because there's this like oppressive government type structure thing, but also like the aliens are there. 
yeah, I I had no idea about any of that. Eventually, I'll jump into it, especially just because I know how much people love the series and like I'm a, like you know I'm a huge Kingdom Hearts fan. So like people are like, oh, we've been waiting X amount of years for Kingdom Hearts three, and same thing when it came to Final Fantasy fifteen, and right. everyone's like, oh, but we'll never get Half Life three, so who cares? <laughs> yeah, I really would like to have a third one just because like I think it wrapped the story up good, but. I mean, Steam is running, or not Steam, but um, whatever the company is there. Uh, Valve. Oh, yeah, that's them. Run it busy, run it, and like, you know, creating other games and stuff that like they haven't been able to do Half Life 3. And probably the team and the people that were going to do Half Life 3, like, maybe they're not into it anymore. You know, maybe some of those people are no longer with Valve even maybe alive i don't know that's a lot of stuff i haven't looked that much into because by the time i had half-life 2 it was already out yeah when did uh half-life 2 come out like 2004 for some reason that date comes to mind but i know the original one that was like in i want to say like the maybe early 2000 late 90s or something because just thinking about the game engine and the graphics it's pretty pretty rough compared to the or, or um not the orange box but half-life 2 right. not that half-life 2 looks fantastic or anything like that by today's standards but i mean i would say half-life 2 does age well like i feel like it ages just as well as like some of the metal gear solid games or some old playstation games like jack and daxter or sly cooper but granted sly cooper is like cell shaded graphics so like that would definitely age better than any more realistic graphics so and right. It is a. Uh, it did come out in two thousand four, November. Half Life Two, you said. Yeah. Gotcha. But yeah, uh, I, so Half Life Two. Oh, you said Gears is probably like in your top two or so. Uh, yeah. If you had to pick like the best Gears, though, which would it be? Probably the second one. Is that the one where Dom dies, or is that the third one? I mean, I'm not gonna say he does or doesn't because like. Yeah, yeah. The second one is where he dies. <laughs> I mean, I feel like spoilers for like a what a seven, eight year old game is fine. Yeah, that's like saying because that's the second one. I'm pretty sure. Well, because maybe he dies in the third one because you find his wife in the second one. I thought you was did you busy? Yeah, he shoots and kills his yeah. wife in one of them. I thought that was the same in game. the second one. I don't think Dom died in the same game, did he? I don't know. It's been a long time since I played that series as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I just remember loving it, and like at the time, I remember my brother and I played it together, and uh, he was like, "Oh, playing this story is like just like watching a movie," which is what a ton of people see, say even now. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, my game, my favorite game series is definitely Kingdom Hearts, and. Shocker. I know, right? But that came out like I didn't get into like the series again until like 2000. 12 2013 or so like played the first one when it came out in like 2002 or so and then really didn't play any other games other than Kingdom Hearts 2 and I wasn't in it for like the story just played a game because my parents got me the game but uh but yeah and I realized I had an HD collection so 2012 came around 2013 got all those and been knee deep in the story in the series since then but favorite game of all time just singular game, not series. It's it's hard because like I like I like to do like break things down by genre. So like mm-hmm. if I were to pick like favorite single player game, I might have to say The Last of Us. Just your favorite game overall that like say you were gonna get your nephew into gaming, um, and he was like of age if it was like a T or M game, um, and you were like this is the like you're you're giving him like this is the you know the song of my people or whatever <laughs> uh, not song but game or whatever you know all right well if i had to do that like it's, it's it's so hard because it's like you don't know what the person is into like you have to recommend them a game nope. of, i'm not saying do this. don't do your normal like avery thing there where you like try to find the right thing for them like they say what's your favorite game i'm gonna play that 
and you have to pick one game. Honestly, if someone said, I'm going to play whatever you recommend, I'll say Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts 2, to be exact. That's a series. I, no, I was going to say Kingdom Hearts 2, to be exact, because that has definitely okay. the best gameplay. It's just fun in general, and it does, like, obviously has, like, the enticingness of you, like, Disney, but, like I said, The Last of Us was amazing. Uh... I absolutely loved Horizon Zero Dawn, and just recently, like, it is hard because I'm thinking more recent titles too, but the God of War 2018 was amazing. Now I'm just listing like, just good You're games. Just like, <laughs> uh, like... Oh, God. Ah, I don't know, man. Let's say, Someone, okay, we'll put I'm it, saying, some, I'm saying, someone's got a gun to your head. I'm saying Kingdom Hearts 2. Okay. But, Fair enough. Going back to the game, games that are just good. Also, Jack and Daxter series, amazing. Jack 2 and 3 were great. I never played that one much, really, at all, other than, like, kind of here and there. I never, like, actually played the whole way through it or anything. The story and the lore actually gets pretty deep, and Jack 2, like, Jack and Daxter, the precursor legacy, which is the first one, uh, like, it was definitely made for kids. Like, the character, Jack, the main character, was mute, and Daxter was just a comedy. And um, Jack 2 opens up completely different tone it was dark it was brooding and like the first things you hear jack say i'm pretty sure are i'm gonna kill francis or whatever the bad guy's name was mm-hmm. and like they start cursing and those were a t and it was like grand theft auto type sandbox game but huh. it was just good and fun and then like the third game like introduced other things and kind of a little bit of time travel but like not confusing annoying time travel just like one small bit that doesn't ruin like or convolute things at all. Right. But yeah, those that those games are tons of fun and I am kinda of tempted to plug up my PlayStation three and play them again right now. Just right now in the middle of the podcast. Bye guys. Is it down um, I mean I actually plugged it up I think less than a month ago, just played Jack two for a little bit and I got stuck on the mission and got mad. Oh, so I'm glad that you upgraded your skills so far and not gaining <laughs> and, like your your maturity to where you just give up on a game <laughs> well the part i was i was stupid and annoying and honestly i was just done but fa- least favorite like gaming tropes like i know one of mine is like escort missions um Escort missions, I feel like, are pretty common for people to hate. Um, yeah, I have a, kind of a, not, it might be obscure, I don't know, but I haven't really heard many people complain about it, but um, when you're playing a single-player game, I guess maybe even like a first-person shooter or something, um, when you're talking with the NPC and they're walking, and your walking speed's always faster than them, so you have to con- continue to stop. I do hate stop. that, too. Yes. Or a slower because it down. should just be a cutscene at that point, right? I feel like I'd rather just sit, watch a pre-rendered, like beautiful cutscene, even if they're more frequent in the game, than have to try to like listen to what they're telling you because they're telling you important information for the game, but like you just want to run ahead and like you know get through the portion, but like they're super slow, and your voice drifts off, and you can't hear them, you don't know, and then you do the mission wrong or whatever, right? And like specifically for, I'm thinking like Assassin's Creed games. Uh, I haven't played uh, 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 not Odyssey. That's the new one, uh, Origins yet. But like specifically those games, like there's no, there's really not really many cutscenes in those games. And if it, mm-hmm. there is a cutscene, it's in the in-game engine. But yeah, you either walk too slow, where you have to kind of like sprint and walk, sprint and walk, or walk too fast. But I do specifically remember Keen, uh, I almost said Kingdom Hearts two, <laughs> Assassin's Creed two. <laughs> Uh, if you started walking with the NPC and you let go of the analog stick, they actually just were on a, on a track and they walked with them. That was amazing. And you could still move the camera around. Like really, it was a really small thing, but no other game to like recent memory does that or did that. I hate driving vehicles in games. A racing game, that's different. But like, say it's like first person or third person. And you have to get in and drive a vehicle, especially if it's like in a time crunch, like in Halo when you had to like get out of the ring or whatever or out of the base because it was right. driving. One, they're super stressful, and two, 
they're stressful because the crappy controls always and they're so frustrating or i'm just absolutely terrible with driving game or cars and stuff in game but it's even harder on pc like when i played consoles and stuff it wasn't wasn't as bad but just it's clunky and you try to go just a little bit to the left and it like makes a whole left turn and then you try to compensate and it like you know it's just like zigzaggy it's not like if you were to use a steering wheel controller or something well on, on pc that makes sense because you even mentioned it before like you it's a one button is just a input on consoles and analog sticks like it's a whole amount of ang- there's an angle that you can point at right. to gradually yeah, turn it so that's it makes sense why it's better on console but you mentioned Halo. Like, I love the vehicles in Halo. I think the like the Warthog, the Mongoose, like all those. I think they drive I just don't great. Like driving, I just don't like driving vehicles in game. But like, also like games where they do have a countdown timer and stuff. It's stressful, but it's like a good stressful for me. Like, it makes me like more. It it gets me more immersed in the game. I see. It just makes me more annoyed because like I run into walls like I normally would, and then probably more so when I'm like you know, trying to get out from the timer or something like that. Um, so it's just like, I'd rather not have it. I, I get that, but I don't know, like for me, like, I mean, you've watched me play games, you you see how like into it I can get and like how I kind of just like become the character and like I pretend I'm them, which is some people do, some people don't. But when it's like so intense to where like in my head as I'm playing, I'm like, wow, this is really intense. And I kind of think about the pressure, I'm like, crap. That just makes it even better for me, but definitely the worst game when it comes to vehicles overall that I could think of is Ghost Recon Wildlands on both PC and playing on console. When I played the beta, it was terrible. They feel weird. They're clunky, and like yeah. they either turn too sharp or too quickly or not at all. Yeah, definitely. Um, I played like Dirt Two or Dirt Rally, whatever, on PC. Um, with keyboard and mouse and it wasn't horrible like that one was was pretty good but like i said that's a racing game so it's like specifics they're gonna put more time and effort into developing like good controls and like the the tolerances for for whatever right. um, like for turning it and stuff so like that makes sense that it would be better but yeah just in general like driving in games is i don't know i just don't like it that makes sense um, so I guess <clears throat> and you're a PC gamer and I know because of, um, your injury, you kind of stopped playing console games for that. Yeah. But bef- before that, what was your choice of console? Um, well, we started with a Dreamcast and then I got the original Xbox and then the Xbox 360. Um, I just like that controller layout better than Sony's. See, I'm not just the thumbsticks. But that's it. Literally, just the reason. Yeah, like people will say, like, oh, the thumbsticks on the Xbox is, is better because it's um, um, alternate. But yeah, when I'm holding the controller, I don't think about it at all. I don't know if it's because I've been gaming for a while now or because it just truly doesn't matter for me. But like, I think I don't know. I had a friend like hold a controller to like change the netflix show or something and it was a 360 controller they're like oh that's weird like the analog sticks are in different positions like i don't think about it and i don't feel a difference mm. but some people do like even um people like oh what's the more comfortable controller 360 or 360 or xbox one or the one or the ps4 to whatever else you want to say like i get it but it's not a big deal for me at all yeah, I always, I mean, when I played, like, PS2 and stuff, I always ended up using the D-pad instead, just because I was so used to the, the straight up and straight across, like you said, alternate or whatever, opposite um, thumbstick layout. It just felt more comfortable than having them so close. But I guess because for me, um, when I played consoles, when I would try to move both thumbsticks towards the inside of the car- of the controller, so, like, left on the right thumbstick and right on the left one, they'd hit my thumbs with each other. And I don't know if it was just my grip or what, but like, it just moved too crazy. So with spread and separated like that, like, I, I never had that problem. 
See, um, I the PS3 controller. I thought the analog sticks were a little close, because specifically when I was playing some games. Um, when I got that, because I got the PS3 pretty late in this lifespan, mm-hmm. I felt myself even like the analog sticks, like or my thumbs getting close to each other or even touching at times. But it never bothered me, and like play, PS4 doesn't have that problem. Obviously, Xbox doesn't either, and even the um the Switch or the Switch Pro controller, like the Switch Pro controller, I think is just as comfortable as the uh, Xbox One controller. And like I like the feel and the, like the materials that's made out of it, rather than like the glossy finish of the uh, Xbox One. Gotcha. But uh, which console do you would you say is like winning the console war of this? generation i don't know because i don't play consoles i just play on pc which is go- clearly going to be winning all of that <laughs> other than maybe some minor exclusives i mean which i mean most... exclusives in the console world are pretty big and major but like honestly pc gaming most of the time either gets a port or it also is on pc even for exclusives um, except for like as of lately you know some of those have been specifically just an exclusive but the exclusives haven't been like something that I've been wanting to play enough to where I was like willing to get a console or something like that. Well, most of uh, Microsoft's exclusives do go on PC because it's Microsoft, but um, yeah, I'll say like, like definitely I miss Gears of War not, by not having an Xbox, and I missed Halo. But after Halo Five, and, like after hearing the stuff about that, I don't really care for it. And Halo Infinite doesn't really. Like, they didn't really show much, but, like, I'm not interested in the Halo series anymore. It's mainly just Gears. But, like, when it comes to PlayStation, mm-hmm. like, PC doesn't get, like, any of PlayStation games. They don't have Horizon. They don't have Last of Us. They don't have God of War. They don't have Uncharted. They don't have Just Cause. Like, PlayStation definitely is killing in the exclusives, but... Well, yeah, I feel like they... So that's kind of, like, their business model to like stay relevant is have these specific exclusives that you have to buy this like console for right and they're just hoping that the exclusives are good enough that other than that people are going to buy them whereas microsoft is kind of like nah we're just going to make a bunch of games and put them on you know pc and xbox and stuff and then just you know they have a more sort of shotgun of, of um method versus more like I guess a sniper method than you know sony has but yeah none of sony's exclusives for me at least were like oh that looks so good i want to buy one yeah i mean that's the reason i got a playstation before uh over an xbox and i ended up getting a pc uh later on or building one but uh what's crazy is that nintendo is still striving through the console wars with them mainly only going with exclusives because obviously you can't get anything Mario or Zelda related on any other console. Right, but I feel like that only really works for Nintendo, right? Because Nintendo is kind of a nostalgic company. Right, and like they started as like what making trading cards and eventually went to making out the console and like the um, game gear and whatnot, but it's just more shocking that just these very few IPs, Mario, Donkey Kong, Zelda... Uh, now newer like Splatoon, like mm-hmm. they're carrying them through this and like still making a ton of money. Obviously, like the Switch was a major success, but like the Wii U was a failure when the Switch was yeah. still just like in development. People were saying Nintendo even said if it fails, like they're out of the console business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just more shocking. I think it's just like dedicated fans, you know, like. Pretty much everybody's a fan of Nintendo. What Nintendo does in their games, right? Like the like you said, their IPs and stuff, Mario and things. It's like at least so far, like our generation and stuff grew up playing the original one. Now maybe in a few years, like they won't have the kids growing up won't have such quintessential like um, growing up with like Mario one and two and Duck Hunt things like that. Um, They'll be. They'll probably be more like, oh, I grew up with like Call of Duty or whatever, like Destiny or something like that, as their iconic game that they played. So maybe they'll be their loyalty shift in that that uh, respect. Which is kind of crazy to think about because, like, even um, like Call of Duty, people like call it COD. That people don't play. Some people don't play it for the story, and the new Black Ops Four is even going to have a campaign, and right. a lot of people just like call Black Ops 
Black Ops. They don't call it Call of Duty. So I was talking to someone at work, and they said that their nephew didn't know it was a Call of Duty game. They just do it as Black Ops. Oh, yeah. Well, that's just like people, uh, like, they call um, work, and they're like, oh, I either have an iPhone or a Samsung. Like, they don't realize that, like, Samsung's just another, like, OEM that makes hardware. Right. And then they're using the the separate OS that's on, you know, tons of other devices and stuff, not just phones, and tablets. Right. Yeah, and um yeah, that's crazy to think about like how like people now like our age grew up playing the NES SNES Playstation, whatever, but eventually people are gonna be like, No, like I grew up on the Xbox One and Which is weird games. to think it's like thinking about that, it's like, yeah, you probably have a, I mean, it is going to be that eventually, but it just makes you feel kind of old, which you shouldn't at this point. Yeah. And um, kind of going to, back to Nintendo, um, when during E3 they announced that Fortnite was going to be on the Switch. And people, I know people, uh, diff- a bunch of different news articles and even a lot of people at work I was talking to, they were saying that whenever they tried to sign on to the Switch to their Epic account, they mm-hmm. either weren't able to, like they were locked out of their Epic account, and um, I heard of someone they played on their Xbox mainly, and they have it on their PC, and they uh, sync their Epic accounts to those two. Right. But then when it was released on Switch, they or no, they tried to play it on PlayStation because one of their friends only had it on PlayStation, and I guess they didn't think about playing it on PC to play with them on PlayStation. But um, anyway, they signed in onto the PlayStation Fortnite tried to log on to the Epic account and either Epic or Sony, I'm not sure which one, but they completely locked them out and they said they were platform locked. So they weren't able to log on to Fortnite at all on their PlayStation until either Sony or Fortnite or Epic fixed it. And I didn't hear about this at all. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, and like even um I heard people were having the same problems uh when they're trying to log on to their Epic account on the Switch, which for me, uh, the first day it was released, I got my Switch and I um, downloaded it and logged in. So I have the same exact account on PC, PlayStation, and my Switch, and it works completely fine. So not sure if I'm just an outlier and all that, but I definitely have heard people complaining about it at work and just on the internet. Gotcha. Yep, no idea that that was even a thing. <laughs> yeah, well. You're definitely more into like gaming news and stuff than I am. If it doesn't come through my like feed or something like that, then no, don't know about <laughs> it. Same thing with like trailers and stuff. But the people I'm friends with like don't generally post spoilers and trailers and things like that. So right, I mean, I definitely hear like people at um, my job now. They do uh, are some are Nintendo fanboys, and like when the Switch uh, uh, Smash was now announced, Smash Ultimate, they were all talking about that and kind of freaking out about it. But then I was like, oh, but look at The Last of Us. Look at Kingdom Hearts. Look at this. Like, yeah, but that's cool. But like, Smash 1 E3. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, just different, different interests. And different interests. Different interests. But yeah, do you, do you have anything else? Uh, been talking for a while. Um, what, what, what's your favorite console of all time or, or gaming device? You know, it could be Game Boy, it could be PC, it could be your Switch, whatever. What have you enjoyed playing games on the most? Xbox 360. Definitely, because that was when I played most of my games with my friends. And, like, just long days, long weekends, just playing Call of Duty nonstop or Halo nonstop. And just playing in my basement, play music and Team SWAT on Halo 3 and Halo Reach, stuff like that. So definitely played the 360 the most and probably have the most memories with it. Gotcha. But as far as I love the idea of the Switch and I definitely would love to pick up a game on the Switch over something else because just having the choice to bring it somewhere is nice. Although I don't... You're splitting this into like categories like normal. (laughs) Okay. I'll stop then. (laughs) Xbox then. Xbox 360. Yeah, for me, I'd probably say Xbox 360 as well, because that was kind of, I guess, quote-unquote, my prime or whatever, like the good old days. Uh, But lately, I've just really been enjoying PC gaming, like, since, you know, for the last, like, three years, four years. Yeah, but it's a console, though. 
super well i just been gaming device in general it could have been gotcha. a Game Boy advance or something like that right i was actually uh, uh, thinking about um but one of those yeah i'd say realistically it was it's probably more xbox 360 uh than it is pc but i've been enjoying the experience of pc a lot more um I I would say behind my Xbox 360, I would say well, it is probably PlayStation and then PC. Like, just from mm-hmm. my experiences to so far, like, I have a, a bunch of friends on PC and not that many on PlayStation, but the times I do have on PlayStation have been tons of fun, and I just love the exclusive games that they have on it. Gotcha. Okay. Fair enough. But, yeah. Anything else? Got anything random? No. no, that's pretty much what I was thinking. I think that's a good spot to stop. Cool. All right, well, I guess that's it, everyone. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. I'm Avery. I'm Ben. And we'll talk to you guys later. You can find us on SoundCloud, iTunes, uh, Discord, as well as Stitcher. And that's about it. Hope you guys have a good one. Yeah, we did it in one take. Cool. We're pros at now.